let's have a cup of tea. Good morning guys and welcome to another video. So this kind of video is the start of a, of a new direction for the channel really. And that direction is drag racing. Yes, can you believe it? I've actually started drag racing or at least entered into start drag racing. So this year I'm part of the Santapod Sportsman ET Drag Racing Championship. Can you believe it? I think it's pretty exciting. I'm kind of, uh, you know, there's a lot of boxes to tick before you can go drag racing in the UK. You have to have a racing license. And so far, I've got all the boxes ticked apart from two. So I've been granted a Motorsport UK race license. I'm just waiting for that to come in the post now. This first championship race, I'm not entering the C63 because like I say, I've, I've never done it before and I could break a lot of stuff. I'm hoping I won't break some stuff, but the, the track prep is meant to be very, very good. So they essentially, well, they, they lay glue down on the tarmac. So your tires literally stick. You can see when people walk across it, their shoes come off because it is that sticky. So there's a lot of stress on the drivetrain. And for this first event, I'm entering in the golf. And yeah, that that's like kind of, probably a you know, strange thing to a lot of people, but if I snap a drive shaft in the Golf or burn the clutch out, I can fix it a lot easier, a lot cheaper than I could fix the C63. Now the next race, I might enter the C63 because the timing for Sportsman ET goes with the person and not with the car. So what am I doing today? I'm basically prepping the Golf. I've got a run what you brung day where I'm doing my witness runs, fingers crossed, a week today and I'm getting the car ready for that. And then I've got one week from that day after my witness runs, provided they go okay and I get signed off on the license to prepare the car for the actual event, which like I say is qualifying in on Good Friday. But I'm basically just gonna take some weight out of the golf because I'm guessing it's gonna run like a 17 second quarter mile, which doesn't sound that fast because it isn't but the Mercedes, just for reference, will probably run a 12.9 or something like that. So this cover falls off here, which reveals this bolt, which I think lets me take that out, I think. Who knows? Let's give it a go anyway. Okay, look, I legit don't think I have the right socket to get that, um, to get that bolt out there. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is make myself feel better and take the front piece out because um that means that i've done something and i will feel better about myself so i think you just pull up on it and pull it out but i'm gonna have to move the seats forwards this is the leg room behind me in my position so i'm gonna have to move these forwards and then i can try and get in here and pull it out okay so now that i've got the front out this thing that's stopping it these ice fixes so if you pull them up you sort of you sort of have a clip on them there there we go so four of those come out and then, um, then we'll try and take the cushion off again. Okay, so I'm on my way to Tool Station. We have a Tool Station and a screw fix right next to each other. And um, I've basically, those spline bolts hold in the seat back and the seat belt, as well as like the bottom part of the seat belt. So they're, they're a high torx uh, application fastener and they use them on aircraft and stuff, but I have no tools to, to get them out. So I'm hoping that Tool Station has this set and I can buy them and take them out. And luckily, obviously, we're in the car, so I can check them in the car park of Tool Station. If they don't fit, I can just return them. So that's why I'm in the car now. I'm going to buy some more tools again. Okay, so I've got my set here and they fit, which is great. So this one will fit in this big hole here. It's a spline or a ZXN, it's called, or a triple, a triple square. That one fits down there. And then there's one here, which is an M8. So it's an M8 spline or M8 ZXN. And there you go, you see. So shoot home now. Now that I'm in, in the car park, these fit, which is great. And then, um, yeah, to hopefully get this seat out. Every time I'm at this screw fix, I see this Land Rover and I look at it and I think, oh, I would love to own that. It's actually got curtains in the back as well. So it's almost like a camper, camper 110. Very cool. Okay, so I'm back and I'm probably going to take this one out first, although the seat belt also fixes to the underneath of here. So I remember I'm going to have to take both out probably before I can take the seat out because the seat belt goes into the seat. So you can't take the seat belt, you can't take the seat out without taking the seat belt out, if that makes sense. Anyway, let's give it a go. So this is an M8 here. Probably going to have to 
use both hands because these will be quite high torque, I think. That, that's not too bad. Or I'm just really strong. Let's go with that. Okay, so that frees that piece up, which should pull that out. There we go. So now you can see the other one, which has the there's a bit of dirt in there or something, stone. But that holds these wire cables, which hold the bottom half of the seatbelt. Oh. Yeah. So what I was trying to say is I can't I can't take this out because the seatbelt's holding it in. You see. So that's going to have to come out first. Okay, so here's what we're left with after the back seats are out. I've actually thought about now taking this front passenger seat out because the weight of that back seat leads me to believe that that is probably at least 25 kilos. So I'd love to get 50 kilos out of this if I could. I think that'd be a good margin. And I'm going to weigh all these parts in a minute. So I'll take this front seat out and then... Yeah, hopefully save 50 kilos. Okay, so this front seat is held in by four bolts. I'm just gonna take the rail out as well. So you've got one there, one at the front, same again on the other sides, um, and this should lift out. It's actually kind of remarkably easy to uh, take all your seats out of your car. And like I say, the performance gain isn't gonna be great, but the less weight that I have to lug down the start line, the better for the drivetrain, the better for my time, the better for fuel economy. Not that anyone who goes drag racing, I think, cares about fuel economy. All these bolts are captive, which means that there's no no nuts on the underside of the car. They all captive inside a piece of metal, a captive nut in the chassis, which is useful. Oh, I forgot. The front seats are heated. But yeah, so the front seats on this car are heated. So um, all the connectors are still connected. I uh, completely forgot about it. Battery's disconnected now, it's just started raining, but I'm gonna leave it probably half an hour just to make sure that the capacitors and everything have drained down so that when I unplug the passenger seat, the airbag doesn't go off, um, which, you know, is good practice. Okay, so my method of weighing these car parts, which is still minus the passenger seat, because I'm waiting to take that out, is to use these trusty old bathroom scales. My weight at the minute is let's say 88 to be easy so 88 kilos and then i'm just gonna hold these basically whilst i'm whilst i'm on it so let's go with these two first 91 so three kilos for those the base at the rear so that 94 so six so that's nine nine kilos now i've got the heavy stuff the seat back 105 so that's a seven kilos. So nine plus seven is 14. No, no it's not. Nine plus seven is 16. <laughs> this piece is 94 and a half. Let's call it 95. So that is another seven plus this piece, 23, plus two kilos for that plus the space saver, which is really heavy. So that's 99, so plus 11. So 23 plus 11 is 34 kilos. And you've got a couple of bits here, but I won't bother weighing those. So 34 without the passenger seat is so far what I've taken out. Okay, so I've realized that there is actually two sections of this wiring. You've got this piece here that goes up here into the seat. And there's a black wire just there which actually goes off into the seat back and you can't disconnect them from this point. And I'm not going to start stripping the seat down to take off those two wires. I don't know where they go. I'm guessing they're probably safety critical wires, which is why you can't really take them off. So yeah, the, the seat plan is scuppered. So I think we'll just leave the seat in. But also on top of that, it means that I won't have any airbag lights on the dashboard, which I'm not sure about scrutineering, but the organizers, the scrutineers, the guys that check your car before you race might say you've got an airbag light on. You need to prove that it's safe or get rid of that airbag light. I'm not really sure how it works. So I've put on the Facebook group, like, you know, asking about it. Um, but it kind of makes me happy that I can't take it out because I'm not going to have an airbag light on. The car should just be fine with no with no safety lights on, which is kind of better, I guess. So, yeah, so 
<laughs> gonna put it all back now this uh, reconnect the battery and then um put all the bolts in and find the torque value for putting these bolts in because like i said i'm not going to strip it all down okay so i've reconnected the battery now and um as you can see it's zeroed my trip just check the warning lights it's binging at me for something lots of warning lights actually <laughs> let's see So I'm sure there's some procedure to turn all these lights off. I just need to find it. In the Mazda you used to do full left lock, then full right lock, and then it would let you have it back, so. Okay, so I'm out in the car now. All the lights have already gone off the dashboard, so it just needed to turn its wheels and uh, check everything was okay inside. But the things that I'm noticing, it's a lot louder without any seats in. Surprisingly a lot louder. You forget how much sound deadening the, the seats actually ha have in them. And, um, just gonna just squeeze it a little bit here. So this car is surprisingly fast. I think a lot of it would surprise a lot of people with how fast it is. It's feeling good. I'm feeling good. Like I said, I've got a week until the um, the run what you brung day, where I have to do my three licensed, uh, three witness license runs, and then after that. We, um, we should be good to go as long as I don't screw up those license runs but I will be filming those um, so that's kind of it for this video I think that's long enough as it is thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed this video I'll explain a lot more about the racing that I'm doing and how it works as I learn more myself and um, be sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you want to see that like I say I won't always be racing in this car it's just for the first round to get used to it um, with its 144,000 mile clutch, so hopefully I don't burn that out on the on the first go. See you soon.